the wind-driven circulation in the ocean. So in the oceans, there's actually a pretty robust circulation. And we're talking about horizontal flows okay, from the surface to a depth of about one to two thousand meters. The wind driven Okay, and it plays an important role in the, in, in the various uh, aspects. All right, so what we're talking about is essentially. What creates it? What creates the wind driven circulation in the earth? We're talking about char characteristic scales and features, and then the important last bit is what does it actually do? So, what creates the wind driven circulation? Indeed, have a look at surface wind systems. Remembering Ekman layers, wind stress curl, Ekman pumping, geostrophic flows, and baroclinic composition. And that, that's actually the components that are important to know about if, in case you're interested in how can actually the wind driven circulation change. So, what do you do? How do you actually change, like, the speed of western boundary currents? What, all right, and then we talk about correct characteristic scales. So what's the structure? Okay, when you learn about subtropical, subpolar gyre. What are the typical speeds actually of horizontal currents in the open ocean? And you learn about circumpolar currents, counter currents, western and eastern boundary currents. And I also mentioned mesoscale X. And we also talk about the structure, and the structure is can you can see the structure if you look at the permanent thermocline the structure and i also introduce you to the nutricline it's associated with with nutrient concentrations how does that structure look like and then the last important bit is what does the wind driven circulation do and that has a number of important roles okay one important role is transport of heat. It regulates climate actually on Earth. It also can be linked to heat waves, which will be discussed later on in the topic. And then indeed, uh, the, the currents provide a transport pathway for floating and swimming objects. And then indeed, you have to ask questions like how, how long does it actually take for a float to travel a certain distance okay. and that stuff of thing and i give you a little bit of estimates of displacement distances and time some very basic stuff but very very important and then we can also talk about the biological connectivity between this sounds like quite a bit of 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 content okay so let's get started.